Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. A group of workers are hired to watch over a Scion's cattle ranch while he is away on business. The cattle are worth literally their weight in silver, which draws in thieves of all kinds. Now, the workers must keep the herd safe or suffer the anger of a demigod. The Siege of Shadow Valley Ranch is a Scion second edition story with Joaquin as a storyteller, Chris playing Hassan, Craig playing Nick, Mitch playing Gary, and with Slavic playing Jesse. If you would like to reach us, you can find us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM and on Facebook at Twin Cities by Night to stay up to date with all of our podcast releases. There you'll also find a generous amount of background info, trivia, and a link to join our Discord channel. If you'd like to support us financially, you can find us on Patreon at Twin Cities by Night. We hope you enjoy. Welcome, listeners, to Scion 2nd Edition, The Siege of Shadow Valley Ranch. So we begin in August, a few months after the events of the uh, Scion of Light Extinguished. So now we find our heroes, Hassan, Jesse, Nicholas, and Gary, have uh, each arrived separately or together, depending on whether they have transportation or not, to Kieran's ranch house about 40 miles west of the uh, city of Phoenix. All right, so how do you guys, let's, how do you guys pull up? Do you, how are you driving together? Do you all one car, what, each one at a time? What are you doing? My friends, they all got a free ride in Hassan's taxi cab where you rock out to great American rock and roll like Led Zeppelin and Queen. I'm going to ride my bike, like, <laughs> mo- you know. Uh, like a regular bike or a motorcycle? No, like a motorbike, obviously. Okay, you have to have clarify. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess, a normal bike would be a real power move. Uh, I, I guess if Hassan's offering, Nick would ride with him because, like, Nick's car is kind of a POS. and uh... Yeah, Gary will go out with Hassan, and uh, he'll laugh as we pass Jesse on his huffy. <laughs> Jesse always wants to be like the loner, you know, rock and roll. Uh, I respect it. It's like um, Arnold Schwarzenegger in uh, Terminator Two, you know? Yes. <laughs> you all you know, you know, you know. None of you watch Terminator Two, great American classic movie with Arnold, the governor. Uh, uh, we we've seen it. it just uh, I mean, I mean, I honestly think that Arnold has a bit more personality. Uh, yeah, uh, but you, you think Arnold? I mean, it's has- a good movie to get drunk to. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, good Budweiser, American beer, great American movie, yes. Hey, what, so what's going on with you and that lady, uh, that lady friend of yours there, Nicholas? Uh, and <laughs> Nicholas kind of like trails off because there's really no lady friend in his life right now. Um, the last time, like in the last episode, like uh, he found out the one he was pursuing was super depressed and seeing another person. So no, you know, friend, you know, talk late at night, give her advice, be like, hey. I saved the world, saved us, you know, saved Phoenix. Yes. I mean, I think we were like kind of left out of the uh, the papers on that one a bit. Yeah, least. I know, right? You know, you get, we should be looked at like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Terminator 2. Like, we are the good guys who go save the day. Yeah, I mean, Gary Story kind of got buried there. Yeah, Gary. Gary, wonderful writer. It always does. They don't appreciate the skill that Gary brings, his prose, the ink onto the paper, how he, he's flew, the words flow like poetry, Gary. I don't care what you think. I think you're great, Gary. Thanks, I, I appreciate that. All right, so you all sort of roll up, and you see outside, it's a, it's a small ranch. You can see often this is like a small corral with, like a, bunch of, with a small herd of cattle. It's you know, not more than five, you know, 10, 15. But as you look, you see that they are mostly white with like red tipped ears. And as you look at them, you, you feel like all of you, you feel it's just like if you were looking at like, like a bank vault and like they had like piles of money out there. It feels, it feels like exactly the same way. You just, you know, they are valuable. Oh my God. America, land of dreams and prosperity. Oh, yeah. What do the red ears mean, Kelly? You're smart. Tell me what the red ears mean. I have no idea. You think it's maybe like what kind of steak they're going to become or? You, what do you think, Jesse? Protein, yes, for muscles. Not like pat his arms. Hell yeah. Oh, All right. And as you see it. that, then you see uh, Kieran O'Connor, the uh, 
sign of Luffy uh, come out from like a nearby bar, and he's like got two huge, huge hay bales up, slung over his shoulders. Which, you, if any of you have have enough survival, you know those like a seventy, hundred pounds each. So he's just like, oh, good, you're here. It just like tosses him down to the ground like it's nothing. Come inside, damn son. Yeah, he just so like you know rolls his shoulders. It comes with the territory. I'm fucking jealous. All right, c- come inside. I need to talk to you. Then. I head inside. Yeah, I think the rest of us will follow. Goes inside. You know, it's a nice. The house itself, it's decently sized. You know, it's got like you know tons of rooms, like at least uh, three different bathrooms. It's a pretty nice place, all in all. But it's you know it's been isolated though. You can see it like all around. You see pretty much just the road you came on that like, goes goes past it, and you know one distant speck of another ranch off in the distance, and that's about it. As you go inside, he he's wiping the sweat off his face. You know, it's, even though he's very like you know red hair, very pale skin, freckles. He should be you know a sunburned mess, but he's just fine. He's like he's just got like, a light sheen of sweat on his face, where it should be though know, soaking. And then he just turns you like, all right, well, I called you here and you uh, to watch over my cattle outside. You do. I mean, you want us to babysit cows? These aren't any ordinary cows. These. This herd itself was a gift from my father when he uh, recognized me as a son. I admit, yeah, when I first got them, I was not impressed at the most, but he basically told me it was a way to keep me responsible. So, because basically it's a holdover from way back when, and luckily it's still, they're so good for legal tender. Each one is roughly worth its weight in silver. Holy cow! Man, so damn. that that herd out there you're looking at is roughly worth nine million dollars. Holy that shit! That is one expensive steak. That's like a wild goose steak. Um, uh, of course, I don't actually get that much because there's you know various legal things that that the old you know, anti divinity trust act and the, from the 1800s. So it's yeah, yeah. damn the tax man. So I get. Closer to like you know, like half that amount, but it's it's my livelihood for the most part. That's how I can afford all this. I guess I ask. And what... the downside to that is most of the time I have to be the one taking care of them. Now, luckily, I don't have to be. I don't have to take care of them all the time, as long as I have some people who I have sworn to me watch over them. Now, the people I would normally ask are unavailable, and. Well, I was looking for people who to lodge over it, and I saw that article. That oh, I didn't know you know I still had that paper. It was lying around the house of way back when Bai died, and I saw your names. And when you've become a full, fully announced scion, you tend to notice signs like that. And well, I still can't figure out whose god you are associated with. Mm, I still want to say maybe like a Greek, maybe, but I just, I know enough. And so, yes, I passed you here. I appreciate your vote of confidence, my friend. Of course, we will watch your cattle. Of course, we would do that. <clears throat> also, your lack of judgment. You're saying I'm stupid? Uh, I'm saying we're stupid. Hmm. All right. He said he's stupid. Uh, not of a, <laughs> uh, 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 I, I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we, we still love him. He has a big heart. And heart is what matters, yes? Uh, I prefer a good solid sword, but that's me. I mean, I don't think any of us have any uh, experience with cows. I mean, what do we do? We do like they do in great American literary classic Lonesome Dove. We get a cowboy hat and we get on some horses and we ride around and we protect them like the regulators and young guns, yes? Uh, Nicholas looks down and realizes he's wearing converses, which are ill-equipped for doing any heavy lifting. What are we going to be protecting them from, supposedly? Just to watch over them in general. And he like he brings you over to like another room. It's like a uh, small armory. It's got several like you know weapons, guns. Uh, you look on one wall, you see another wall. It's like a couple of spears, axes, and a uh, sword. Fucking Terminator too, my friends. <laughs> yeah, Nicholas um, laughs at that um, and um, kind of elbows Jesse and says, did you bring the beer? All right, so here's the thing. I don't expect there to be trouble most of the time yes. when I leave for, for stuff. It's going to be fine, but I don't know. Something Famous about this. last words. 
you would you should be surprised how many times I've heard that expression. But yes, so if you do need to get it, here he just like several stuff. You know, got some pistols here. Uh, uh, you know, a couple of rifles. No machine guns. I hate those things. I swear. Like, what is with the American military, American gun culture, and trying to make everything look military? No craftsmanship. I swear. I want when I buy a gun, I don't want to have a thing that's more holes in it than not. I swear. This, it just like he pulls out like this old bolt, bolt action rifle. If I had my way, I, we wouldn't have gone past bolts. But well, I'm not a gunsmith. Do you have uh, like uh, boots and hats and everything for my friends in case they have to, you know, do some heavy lifting? No, uh, I'm not going to be leaving until tomorrow. So if you do need to prepare, well, I'll give you tonight to repair. Then tomorrow you come in and watch things. Yes, I uh, think you shop. We go shopping, Nicholas. Yes. And then now, before else? you do this, I'm going to have to lay down some rules. If you agree to do this, I will pay you for this. And he's less off. I will pay you 5000 each. That's a lot of cheeseburgers. Hell yeah, I can pay my rent. And I will need you to swear to me for this. And not just like any, just like a promise. I mean, this is going to be binding. Out of character, does that mean like even after this, we still have alliance to him? No, it's, he's saying more like uh, if, you do, if you break this oath, he probably he might have to kill you. Okay. Can I uh, talk to my friends real quick before I give you an answer? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, go right ahead. I wouldn't expect... I hope you think about before doing this. Yes, thank you. Uh, and I motion to... Hell yeah, I'm in. Be- Fuck oh, yeah. Sh- sh- hey, God damn it. God damn it. Jesse, sh- you don't show your hand. You got to know... Like Kenny Rogers says, you got to know when to hold them and know when to show them. And right now, not time to show them. <laughs> right, 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 son. Listen, right. I want to do what's best for you, too. And I point to Jesse Nicholas. And I know you uh, a little tight in the... In the wallet department. But Gary, I know you got a lot going on. And if you want, if don't want to, I understand. But this could be a very good expose. Salt of the earth, American dream. You know, uh, right? you could use this as an opportunity to write about us. The four brave ones that were chosen by a scion to protect his red ear stakes. Yes? Yeah, I could do that. All right. So we, the only thing that has me a little iffy biffy scared. Yeah, if we fail, we die. I don't really. I made it this far. I don't want to die over cheeseburger again, stolen. I mean, we did pretty well last time. And I, I mean, they're just cows. Yeah. And I mean, if we kill mummy, who the fuck is going to come through us to get a cow, right? I mean, uh, you were in a war zone, Hassan. Uh, you know how to use a gun, right? Fuck. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know how to use a gun. <laughs> so zero knots and firearms. Yes. Um. How much commando? That looks like commando scene. You know, it's like, doo, 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 and everything opens up. And let's go back, cowboy clothes. We act like we young guns, drink some Budweiser, eat some pork and beans, and watch Ready Our Cows. And we make some easy money. Yes, we agree? Uh, if it's going to be that easy, sure. I don't know. Oof. The gods may have something different planned, Nicholas. Don't take my word at it. I'm no god. Even though I have been visited by this old man who rides in my cab, and every time that I play ACDC Thunderstruck, he tells me to tear it off. He doesn't like it. I don't know why. Well, I mean, you like the movies. Uh, if someone asks if you're a god, you say yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, of course. Okay, let's agree, yes. We swear, we go to Walmart, we buy some cowboy boots, cowboy pants, cowboy shirt, cowboy hat, drink Budweiser, uh, maybe sing a little like uh, Home on the Range with the guitar playing and... Uh, we go ahead and we have fun. You all agree? We move forward. I mean, should we do a little cow tipping while we're out here? No tipping of cows. Cows weird. Uh, no, we don't. Um, no, Gary. No, Gary. No. That's, just, that's an easy no. That's an easy no. Okay. We go. Then I lied. You leave your bike here, Jesse. Quit trying to pretend like you're uh, Lambo or something. Riding on bike by yourself all mysterious and everything. Someone's got to be. <laughs> Still checking out his guns. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I walk up to Kieran. Uh, Karen, you know, I still got my hand. You got yourself some regulators. Okay, so do you all? He just like turns out. Do you swear that you will not that your actions will not lead to the loss of my property? I swear. I swear on everything that is important to me. All right. Then he, he shakes your hand, each hand individually, saying that you know, make sure that you promise this. I swear. Uh, I swear to you know the best of my ability. You know, Gary. I swear to the best of my ability as well all right that's what i want to hear so thank you for this i'll feel better knowing that i won't have to lose my herd 
Oh, yeah. when, when's the shift start? I'll be leaving tomorrow afternoon. Uh, I'd like if you guys are out here, like, you know, in the morning, just make sure that I can show you how to do stuff. And then, then I'll be gone for like several days, three at the most. Yeah, sounds good. We go to shop and we see it tomorrow morning, okay? Very good, my friend. And as we get in the cab, I'm going to turn put in a country CD. It's going to be, I got friends in more places. I'd be like, hey, uh, a few years ago, I come when I come from Iraq, I was doing a little medical class in a hospital in D.C. And some janitor was singing this song. And it's been stuck in my head ever since about having friends in known places. The whiskey is fun. And the blues chases my beers away. You know song, yes? Nick is disgusted by the music. Why you be disgusted? I take out a flask of booze. <laughs> just drink it and offer Nick. And the others, of course. Yeah. But Nick first. He, he takes it. <laughs> Do we got to uh, buy Budweiser too? Fit up trunk with Budweiser? Yes. As I pull into the parking lot of Walmart. Uh, I guess we could buy some. Yeah, but why's a good American cowboy beer? Yes. Gilly, you got uh, your new dress I up. Afford. And Gilly, Gilly, just so you know, when we dress up as cowboys, it's not sexy stripper cowboy. Don't try to be all, you know, macho, macho like you always be, okay? What? Yeah. All right. Yeah. You flirt with one guy to get information out of him. This is not sexy, oh. sexy cowboy time. This is cowboy protect regulators, mount up young guns time. Uh, okay. What he said. Yes. Yeah. I'm just going to stick to the jeans I'm wearing. Okay. You get cowboy shit, though. Yes. If we, Nick, Fine. Let's, get me okay. a cowboy shirt. Let's go. And so we go in and I take it. We go shopping. And, and shopping montage. Yeah. yeah cowboy Walmart <laughs> shopping montage. <laughs> Yeehaw. <laughs> Wham's playing in the background. <laughs> yeah. Nick takes some time in the sporting goods section, just kind of looking over camping equipment and such, <laughs> even though they're probably going to be staying in or around the house. But hey, Nicholas. You got to call that girl back. Now you macho macho cowboy man. You not only beat mummies, you protect God's cattle. You got to put total package. Jesse, Jesse, come here. Jesse, I was like pull him away as he's looking at like some cowboy gloves. Isn't Nicholas macho macho man? Yes, he should be with girl. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, you, we get you squared away. When we're done here, you got five grand of money. You take her to casino. You wine and dine her. You say, I saved the world. I save some cattle. I might or be save sign. yourself the effort. I mean, I, I, I know I, this best chick, two hundred an hour. No, that not good. He went, no, 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 no. Don't listen to him. Don't. No, you need to meet nice, respectable girl. You take her to mall. You show her to the mall coffee person. That's your friend, and you take her and show you all your stores and everything. All right. Whatever girl you get, make sure she's not nice and respectable. <laughs> That's like the worst decision you can make. Don't listen to Hassan at all. He's a terrible influence. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, pretty sure I should probably not go after that Hikiri, considering, like, you know, Kirian um, was going out with her and ah. her <laughs> stuff. You swear to protect this cattle. You don't swear to protect this booby doo boop. You know, no horizontal rebob with him and her. You didn't swear to protect that. You swear to protect those cows, which also shows a little inside the baseball. Yes, inside the baseball. He more thinking about his red uh, cows than he thinking about her dreams and aspirations that American women love so much. Well, you could buy a lot of dreams and asp- aspirations with six million dollar cattle. Yeah, or you could buy a lot of nice food for five thousand dollars. Nice clothes, get your hair cut, have Gary take you out, and get you real respectable dress. Like, I'm telling you, we could do this. Believe uh, in yourself, and Nick's she'll believe in you. Nick sort of scoffs when he mentioned get his hair cut. <laughs> and I'm sure as we can fade away, unless anyone has anything else, as we're wait till the next morning. Hekalu, such a beautiful name, my friend. All right, so we're gonna cut to the next day after that <laughs> oh god and so you all pull up to the ranch again so i'm curious you have your you know change of clothes da, 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 da. And so how many of you are actually dressed like cowboyish? i do uh, <laughs> i just let hassan do his thing jesse probably just like went with it because it seemed funny to him hassan but is also, like also he doesn't have money to pay for it so probably it was like if he could spot him <laughs> Hassan hooked him up. But Hassan looks like straight like city slickers, the movie where he comes out with, like brand new jeans that aren't dirty, brand new shirt, boots and a hat, you know, but he's like he probably even has like a pistol belt with no pistols in it, you know, just kinda like 
looking serious and he's always squinting like clean eastwood he probably even has like a little thing of straw he's been chewing on that he found on the side of the road gary will put his a uh, cowboy shirt on but other than that he'll have his jeans and his sneakers not even any boots and got no boots on you nah sneakers okay yeah i think uh nick no, typically wears blue jeans anyways he just probably uh, upgraded the boots and like threw some flannel on and baseball cap to keep the sun out but yeah he, he, he kind of went for like a in between sort of look at the whole time when i was at chad and i lock we watch uh spaghetti westerns you know what spaghetti westerns no nicholas jesse kelly you ever watch spaghetti yeah, westerns they're too? terrible what you out of your I, I fucking? I remember seeing some of those when I was a kid. Yes, you out of your fucking mind, Jesse. Clint Eastwood is a fucking god. He's you know. <laughs> Come here, you walking down. Son, the... I'm sorry, but you have terrible taste in movies. What? No I, way. I, I totally think that the Three Ten U remake was better than the original, but yes, but you watch the good, the bad, and the ugly, and you see how much zero shits that Clint Eastwood takes. Ooh, Clint Eastwood's American. American as American can be. Uh, you shame me, Jesse, sometimes. <sighs> like, like you baffled me sometimes, Jesse. First you like, I pay for love. And then you try to say like a movie like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 is <laughs> like a great movie. Like you, I don't okay, get okay. you. Okay, okay. We're going to move on from that. Uh, I did not expect this to turn into the <laughs> 80s Hassan. movie review with, with Hassan. Hassan, have you tried doing your own podcast? I think you'd be kind of good with it. Uh, did I, I talk to my customers while driving as I knock on the door? <laughs> on Kieran's door. You could totally like record a podcast while you're driving. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. Then just Kieran opens the door. And says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on in. Come on in. It just, he's, he's just got like an axe in his hand. He's just rubbing a whetstone over it. Hey, Kieran, uh, do you have like an ATVs here that we ride along uh, if we got to look at uh, cows or horses? Uh, I do have, uh, that's, I do have like a, I think that they have a couple ATVs out in the back. I don't have any horses. I mm, okay. This whole ranch is basically just to keep care of my uh, cattle. Okay, gotcha. Understood, yes. You got a beautiful home, by the way, Kieran. Yeah, I built it myself when I moved out here. Did you and Hakuru used to live in here? Well, no, she has her own place. Uh, I'm not talking to you about this. Oh, I just know I know you're a handsome man. Just wondering how your relationship currently going with that girl. And, and again, he just sort of like squares himself off. It's like, I don't really talk about that. I like to keep my private life uh, personal, uh, private. Yeah, I respect that. It's just, uh, you know, just wondering. Hey, hey, um, yeah. I'm not like Francisco, which you guys remember uh, was the uh, scion of the Teotl. He's like, I don't, you know, you know, sprag about sleeping with everything with two legs uh, under the sun. Hmm. I'm yes. pretty sure at least a couple with four legs, and I know at least once with none. It reminds me of someone I know. <laughs> I was just like sideways look at Greg and then just look back at you. Okay, you go on your trip. We watch house. Uh, you wear a freezer at so we could put, but I mean, uh, put water in the <laughs> fridge at. I don't really care if you bring beer. I, I, I know the guys. I, I know Miguel. He t- t- tends to have a little bit of tequila on the job, but that's, yeah, just he points you over to like a fridge over that place. Uh, is it just us here too? No, Miguel, just us for it, right? No, uh, like I said, the uh, guys I would normally rely on are either A, had a car accident two weeks ago, broke his leg, horrible. Two, over in uh, Atlanta, w- visiting his, for his sister's wedding. Third is, I think, on vacation in France. And the fourth, I have no idea. Nice to be known as the uh, fifth choice. <laughs> yes. Well, normally all four of them are working together, but... You got this. We're good. Trust me. We kill a shit ton of mummies. We're good. Yes. And then he just, then he, just like, he points over to like a to like a, a trophy on the wall. It's like this big snarling thing with like teeth. And it's like, try killing one of those and then tell me how impressive you are. I just kind of like turn at him, look up at that, turn and look back at him and tip my hat and be like, blood taken. <laughs> I killed a mummy. We've already said that, Nicholas. We've already said that. <laughs> and I just got like, let's not embarrass ourselves anymore. <laughs> okay, you go on your trip. We take care of your home. You have a good trip. Don't worry. In good hands, okay? Okay. And he just, he points out he points out to like a list of like phone numbers on the wall. It's like if if you need to call me, and you know, Zeus came by and burned down the house. I don't know why he would do that, but uh, I've heard of Stranger Things. Then that's my number on there. Below that is the number of my teacher who, if you, if you see something big and nasty that has more teeth than it needs, call her. 
So you might probably tell you if you can drive it off or if you just need to get out of town. Yes, sir. Sounds good. Now go, go. Go enjoy your thing. We got that under control. Okay, good. So he, like, you know, p- puts the axe in, like, a special case and, like, you know, gets a uh, pistol, puts it in another case and, like, gets some more bags and just heads out. As he leaves, what time is it around the time he leaves? I'd say it's about uh, 10-ish in the morning. Oh, still early. Uh, I walk up to this nice stereo system that I'm sure he has in his living room and I look at the three and I'm like, any musical requests? Not country. Oh, God damn it, you Nicholas. Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath. Fuck yeah. Good American rock and roll band right there. As I put in Black Sabbath and turn it up. And then I'm like, I'm with the Budweiser Getty. Get the Budweiser. Yes. Is there like a deck or a patio to this place? I'll say it has. It does have like, in the, like a porch, front porch area. Gary's going to go out on the front porch and have himself a drink out there. Yeah, I'm going to walk out with him and kind of just sit there and. You got that cigarette, Gary? I feel like I want the cigarette as I'm like sipping this Budweiser. Yeah, you you do. You'd see like off a distance, you know, at Kieran's car going away, and then you see another way. Like looks like a bunch of people on horseback riding around. It's such a beautiful country, yes, Gary. Gary's gonna pat down his pockets. I, I got some weed. I don't have a cigarette on me though. Well, that shit's bad for you. It kills brain cells. No, thank you, <laughs> Jesse. Jesse, you got cigarette? As I scream through the screen door. Ah, uh, yeah. Let me just check. Uh, down to my last two. Okay, here's the thing, my friends. I think we're going to have to, like, uh, you know, a little bit of fun time, a little bit of responsibility time, yes? We're going to have to go walk around and check in once in a while. We got ATVs in the back. We maybe go check, uh, let's see, what time is it? 10 o'clock now, look at the sun. What time of the year is it in Phoenix, by the way? It's, like, early August, so oh, it's hot. Sorry, caramba. Yeah, we are around 7 in the evening. We go check, yes, when it starts cooling down. And uh, still be hot out a little bit, so don't drink too much beer as I sip some Budweiser. And then we cool it out. We check, and then we grill it out, right? You grill it out, and we have some steaks and some beans, and we have talk, yes? We have fun? Yeah. Does anyone know how to use that? And Nicholas gestures at the grill. Uh, yeah, I know how to cook, yes, I do. Yeah, we all know. We figure it out. It's the fun of it. We are in the great outdoors. We're riding on a blaze of glory, like Bon Jovi, in Young Guns 2. Yes. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> riding high in the blaze okay, of glory. Okay, okay. Moving on. So the day elapses, and, you know, you spend some time, you know, making sure the cattle are fed, that they have water, they have various, you know, equipment just maintained, all this little stuff. He's got, like, you know, Kira makes sure to leave, like, a little list of, like, what to do with things, da-da-da-da-da. So. Nick is going to try to lift one of those hail bells like uh, Kieran was lifting earlier. All right, I'll say, you can lift one fine, but it's it's you know it's heavy. It's you know like it's about 70, 80, almost like a hundred pounds. You can, you can, you can manage one, but it's not for very long. If you want to pick up two, we'll have to make you roll for that. Yeah, he's going to try it. All right, yes. Yeah, so I would say give me a might and uh, athletics. I'll say yes, athletics. Now, how many? I'll say this is going to take three successes for you to get to it. Uh, what's the difficulty? It's always going to be eight. That's the default. And then what you want is a higher number of successes. Or successes. All right. So you square yourself off. You you know, set, set your feet. You make sure to lift with your back and not with your knees. And then you're just like, and even though you you struggle a little bit, but like you manage to like get them up there, and you're just like ah, and you even like you can. I'll say you can have a little bit of a flourish with the extra. Success. So how do you want to expand that extra success? Can I, can I, uh, oh yeah, I do have five successes actually. And that's what you need uh, on your back. Never mind. Sorry. Don't, um, don't lift with your back. Yeah. Can I use my extra success to make sure that everyone else saw me do it? Yes. And I certainly so wanted like, have to do that. Hey, it's like, you know, like flip them around, like toss them in the air. What do you want to do? He'll, he'll hoist them up and then like, um, hold them up, like, and walk around sort of like the same pattern that Kieran was doing earlier and chuck them back down. It's like, yeah, it's not that hard. Was hey, it? Jesse, 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 Gary. That's just like Rocky four montage. But at the end, he's in the barn in Russia and he lifts up that cart with his family in it. And he's like, oh, dude, you're going to get the girl. And like, who's going to be like, not only does he have big American brain and American heart, but he has big American muscles. It's like Jesse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, you you remember seeing like hot on fire. Hassan, are you high? I had a little bit of beer. I like like hold up the second beer. I don't drink too much. God damn it! But I'm a cowboy today. Yeah. All right. All right so uh, the day progresses and night falls, and you all you know lights 
go on it, but it's pretty dark outside. This far from the city, you can see the glow of the city off in the distance. The, you know, like the lights of Phoenix, the Peoria Chant, all the other like the whole metro area off in the distance to the east. But out here, it's pretty pretty dark. You can actually see the stars much better than you can see in the city. And then as you you see, uh, you hear like a car way off in the distance, and then you hear like. So you suddenly see something like scurrying and running really fast towards the towards the uh, branch you know, off in the dark. We all see that. I'll say, give me a cunning and a survival to notice something in the dark. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, everyone everyone can roll for that. One success. One for me too. Hey Quinn, I would like to use my keen-eyed predator knack. All right, so what would you want to roll for that? Basically, you can roll your highest attribute or whatever attribute you think is appropriate for this. Okay. Well, I get one thing for free, and I'll use how many hostile enemies are present as the one thing for free. All right, I'll say you notice that there's just one thing coming towards you. And it's hostile. Yes. Okay. And then... So everyone only got like one or two successes? So I got a success. A one success? Yeah. With two successes, that's enough for uh, Jesse to notice. Like, yeah, there's something like a like a. It's about the size of like a uh, big dog that's just booking it towards the uh, cattle. Uh, Jesse just starts running. Holy shit! That's a fucking dog charging the cattle. Oh, it's fuck! It's Holy fucking, fucking shit! And he's just running towards the dog. Do you have it's... any? Are you just, are you unarmed? Do you, do you break? I have some? I have a specialty in unarmed combat, and I have okay, good close combat. So Jesse is going to run towards it. What is everyone else doing? Like scared off with something. Anyone have a gun? There's guns inside there, but I got my crowbar. We got those. Uh, is there any like floodlights or anything in the ranch that we could turn on to like? Yes, I would say yes. I'm going to turn on the floodlights and I'm going to go get to uh, the, the, I go turn on the floodlights and I'm going to get the, uh, the get ATV. I get the ATV, turn on floodlights. I grab my crowbar with me and I'm like, uh, you get gun and you start scaring off. Yes. Kelly, you want to come with me? Is there an aluminum baseball bat in the armory? There was one in my. There's one in my cab. Yeah. I'm pretty <laughs> sure there's bigger stuff than just a baseball bat in the armory. Yes, but Gary's not competent with fighting, okay. so he'll grab a baseball bat. You want to come with me, Gary? Yes. Yeah, let's go. All right, you two go. You, hey, you, Nicholas, with gun. You watch out, Jesse. Okay, we turn on floodlights so Jesse can see what's going on, and we ride up on ATV. Yes. Uh, okay. You As know how to fire a gun, right? Yeah, of course he doesn't. <laughs> oh, you have a, okay. And uh, like I rush and I, as we're running towards where the ATV are, I'm gonna like. Flip All right. On the so I'm gonna say that uh, Jesse, you get. Are you trying to get between the thing approaching and the cattle, or are you just gonna charge the thing itself? Protect the cattle, I guess. More important. All right. So you're gonna get yourself in between the two. Oh yeah. All right. I mean, Jesse so- also has a gun, but but he just feels like he can punch it to death. All right. So you get get in position, and then you see like this. It gets it gets closer. You definitely see it's like this like reptile skin. It's got like some, some spines down its back, and then next thing you know, it just zooms past you. You blink, and it's just like it's like almost like a cheetah speed. It just like bursts past you on onto like just like it leaps on one of the cattle, and then you turn and you see like this. It's like this like dog size like reptile thing with just like snarling and just it's it just sinks its teeth into like one of the uh, cattle and just starts sucking on it. Uh, get it off! Get it off! Like, yeah, can, are the floodlights on? Can can everyone see better now that the floodlights I'll say on? that, yeah, as, you know, that uh, Hassan and the other, they roll around with, like, an ATV and you turn on the floodlights, you def- you can see this thing clearly. Can we rush up to the ATV? Uh, like, I'm going to try to drive past it, if Jesse can't get to it, and hit it with my crowbar. Wait, so you're going to, like, drive up to it and then, like, toss Jesse your crowbar? No, no, no. I'm going to drive by the cow getting attacked and drive by and like swipe that, that animal with my crowbar. Uh, unless Jesse can get there first and prevent it. But I'm like trying to stop this thing from killing. You know what I mean? Like, I'll say uh, both of you give me an initiative roll just to see who, who can get there first. The best combat skill and cunning. Okay. My initiative is 17. What's our best combat skill? Like, how, the fu- how do you got 17? That's insane. I rolled a nine and I have five in close combat and three in cunning. Oh shit! I got four in cunning, and I got three in close combat. Okay, I need to roll one d10. You can't beat me. I can't. Mm-mm. You can okay. only like if you roll a ten, then you're at the same level. So either you tie or oh nine. So I got nine. But plus if you tie, seven. it would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. so sixteen. Yeah. All right. So Jesse, you get there first, and you try to like yank this thing off, uh, right? Yeah. Exactly. All right. So to yank it off, I'll say, give me a might. And I would say close combat. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, how many successes do I need? I'll say you need a lot. That's fair. Uh, I just got two. Yeah, I'm afraid that's not enough. And you, you yank on this thing, but this thing is anchored onto okay. the cabinet. Can I at least, like, grab its... Uh, how is it sucking it through? Is it like, does it have a tongue that sticks into it? Or how does it work? I'll say it's like its teeth are like locked into like one of the cattle's legs. And it's sort of just oh, like, fuck. you can't really make out what's going on inside its mouth. But you definitely see there is some kind of like tongue action going. Okay. Can I like try to gouge out one of its eyes? Uh, I'll say yes. But I'll, before you do that, then Hassan yeah. comes rolling in. Yeah. So what do you do need me to roll? Yeah. Uh, Gary, you're holding on around my waist, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go. And what do I need to roll to like drive by and hit this thing in the head with my crowbar? Get it to dislodge. <laughs> this is some complicated stuff going on. Okay. I, mean, I, I be- know. Uh, I'll say yeah. dexterity. Nice. And I want either pilot or close combat. I don't know which one. Both are the same, to be honest with you. I'll say close combat. Just to make sure you don't actually accidentally hit, you know, Jesse. Okay, give me one second. They don't have willpower or anything like that in the system, do they? No. Three successes. Fuck, we get momentum. I yeah, you do, actually. Yes, I would say, yeah, you get more momentum from Jesse's failed roll. Okay, so what is that? Another dice? Yeah, it basically means that if you get another die, you can spend it again. You all have to like agree to spend it. For each failed roll, you get one momentum from the scene. Do, do you want me to spend another dice, guys, or to get this thing off? I think we should gather more momentum. Okay, we'll just leave it. I got three successes then. Mind if I take a swing at it too? Yeah, go for it. Wait, so you got, you got three successes? Yeah. I'll say that's enough to hit it. Now, I'll, let me see. That's enough to knock it back, but you, you know like, it doesn't really hurt it. it just, you knock it off. Well, that's good. That's good. That gives Jesse a fair chance to bite its fucking tongue off. <laughs> I actually gain an additional point of momentum because I have a specialty in close combat fighting with my fists. Awesome. All right. So are you going to take a hit at it, Gary? Or? Yeah, I'm going to take a swing at it. I'll say, yeah, give me another uh, dexterity and close combat since you're not actually driving it. Nice. I actually don't suck at this one. Two successes. You hit it good, but like it's like you can tell it just bounces off its uh off its just uh, skin. It's it's really tough. I, I yell yippee I cowboy as I like drive by after I hit it and I'm like kick its ass, Jesse. <laughs> I'm like hold its head down so I can run over it with the ATV. All right, so then I'll say yeah, Jesse. Uh, do you want to grapple it? Yes, and like I said, I want to fucking gouge out its eyes. All right, so uh, let's see. Grappling. Jesse uh, needs his payday. Athletics and might. Okay, okay, okay. Two successes. All right, I'm afraid this thing is it's this thing it's, it's scrabbling. It's really t- it is you try to get the thing, but it's like a insanely strong. It's way stronger than it looks because it just like it scrabbles out of your grip. Fair enough. Fair enough. Just it'll fucking bite it then. Did you say you're gonna bite it? Yes. I mean, it's, it's biting the cow, so I'm just gonna t- give it a taste of its own medicine, right? <laughs> okay. If I can get another action into, like, after he's done there, like, before he does it or whatever, yeah, yeah, he yeah. Said, slipped out of his grip, right? So, yeah, he, he doesn't, he's not able to, like, you know, pin it down and grapple it. I'm gonna tell Gary, I'm like, Gary, hold on. And I'm just gonna fucking, like, steamroll this fucking thing with the ATV, like, hit it with the girl, the ATV, and just like. Okay, so that, I'll say, give me a dexterity and pilot. Okay, that's seven dice also. Give me a second here. Three successes. All right, so I'm afraid it's still not enough. You, you just, like, you, I will say, like, you knock it back, but it, it just it gets back up and just snarls at you all. <laughs> I, like, I, like, reel it while it snarls at me. Come on, motherfucker. And you can definitely see, like, it's got, like, huge black eyes on the side of its head. It's just a mouthful. It just, it, it's all, mouth is all bloody from the cow. It's just dripping down its face. I'm going to scream, Nicholas, shoot the fucking thing, God damn it! Uh, Nicholas, who was, like, trying to catch up this entire time because he couldn't fit on the TV, is going to level the bolt action that uh, um, Kieran had earlier and try to uh, plug a hole in him. All right, so I'll say that's going to be a skill in firearms. Just So I, I don't have that, so do I have penalty? I will say that... Can we Can we give him a momentum to make up for his lack of firearms? I'll say yes. How much momentum do we have, Momentum Keeper, Jesse? I know you keep track of that, said things. Five, five. I'd say it would make sense to give him five momentum because, yeah. like, he lifted yeah, the two just... bales. He's got a fucking gun. He's feeling like he can get the gal, I hope. Yeah. So do it, motherfucker. Just give it to him. Do you agree, Gary? Yeah, yeah why not? Yeah, and I will say it. that since this is a bolt action thing, it's going to give you an extra enhancement. 
which basically means that I believe if I remember it correctly, it means like you have one more automatic success. All right. So is that uh, like Dex and firearms or? Uh, no, according to the rules, it just says firearm. Awesome. So six dice then, all momentum. <laughs> One success after all that. Yeah, I'm afraid it, it was definitely you. You shoot it, and it definitely you could definitely see like a scratch on the thing. But like it's still, it just like it backs off, and then like, it just like snarls back at you, and then it, like starts to sort of circle around the place. Nicholas is gonna see notice that he like the balls are doing nothing, so he's gonna turn the uh, like it definitely like left a scratch in it, but like it didn't really like penetrate the skin quite yet. Yeah, Nicholas is still gonna turn the the weapon over and just like like uh, wrap um part of his shirt in the hot barrel and just kind of use it as a club. All right. So I'll say the uh, the thing, actually, g- give me intellect and a cult roll to see if you recognize what this thing is. Holy shit. I actually got a success. Yeah, I got one success on one die. <laughs> one success. Two successes. All right. So Hassan, definitely, yeah, since you got the most, I'll say that you definitely recognize it. It's, you, know, you haven't seen one in person before. You've seen pictures of it, though, and like, you know. The news and stuff, it's a chupacabra. Do I know, like, what their weaknesses are or, like, what, like, the... Like, uh, you don't know quite that. You definitely know that they are, like, tough little SOBs. And usually, most of the time, like, on the news, it takes, like, a scion to, like, you know, beat, like, take on more than just one. But, you know, people can't. If it's just one, you know you can't take one on. L- listen, uh, this is ch- ch- chupacabra. Chupacabra. We, we need to, uh, we need to hurt it off. It's going to be very hard unless we all attack at once. And I'm like, I look at Jesse. I'm like, we got to coordinate. And I'm like, I look I'll at make it. sure it stays here. And Jesse takes out his gun and fires a couple of rounds into the air and activates his knack, the biggest threat. When you make a show of force or intimidate your enemy, make a knack skill roll. On a success, it must focus its uh, efforts on dealing with me first, or it has a plus two difficulty on anything else. All right. Then roll your knack thing. Uh... I guess it could be might plus athletics, I guess. I'll say... Uh, or something. I don't know. Maybe firearms. Since I'll say actually, say, what would it be presence, I would say, because to make it focus on you. Oh, right. Presence. That makes sense. Yeah. Presence plus athletics. Okay. Five dice. Yeah, I get a success. I'll say that's enough just because it's, it focuses. Like you see like, its head for it just focuses on you. Yeah. Now, it's not charging yet, but you definitely say it's winding up to a charge. When it hits me... You guys need to fucking hit it with all you've got. Yes, yes. I get off the ATV and I like grab my crowbar both hands. And I look at Gelly. Let's go, Gelly. Go where? Get, get ready to attack once it, it charges him. And like I'm like start circling him up and I like kind of get to the side of it as I notice it's not paying attention to me. Gary's going to hop into the driver's seat of the ATV and aim it right at the Chupacabra. Oh, I could have done that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're trying to like circle it, right? Or no? It almost sounds like you like you're lining up, but then like once it, like it goes after Jesse, then you like all, like attack it at once or something. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Unless you want to hit it with the ATV again, you know? That that's Gary's plan is to just run the fucking thing over. Okay, I tried it; it didn't work. But okay, <laughs> let's do. It. All right, cool. Yeah, so we're gonna do that. Just start, you, you all like stand off against each other, and then cut to break. Oh, hello again, folks. I'd like to tell you about the Facebook group we run called White Wolf and Onyx Path RPGs Gameplay and Media. Have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts or just media in general that deals with your favorite White Wolf role-playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded? One that won't be drowned out by random posts and discussions so that your media could give the attention you deserve. The group is specifically run with the sole intent of it being a one-stop shop for people to view or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. The group is already immense and continuing to rapidly grow, with new media being shared every day. Stop on by. We hope to see you there.